Now once you've got your burning in process done, what you need to do is create a notch. This notch is all important and I would wager it took dozens and hundreds of years of people tinkering around to figure this notch out back in the day to figure out how this fire is generated. You see here I've drawn two lines and I'll put two arrows up there to, to, to show you. I've drawn two lines. It's about one-eighth of the piece of pie. If you imagine that circle as a big pie, right, I'm taking one-eighth of that pie out. Now, the apex, the tip of that pie, is not going all the way to the center of the pie. It stops about one-eighth short. So, you know, the eighth is just a, is a, a kind of a rule of thumb. Take a piece of wedge out of this um, circle and don't go all the way to the center. The larger the wedge you create, the more chance that you've got for the spindle to not have enough support in that circle to, to do its job, to spin back and forth. It tends to kick out when you create too much of a, of, a, of a gap. Too little of a gap and you've created too choked of an area for the, the coal to gather. So it one eighth works really, really well. Practice with this. Now the way to generate uh, that notch, you can do this a couple of ways. You see that I've scribed a line. I like to transfer that line all the way down. And I do this one of two ways, if not both ways. I use my Swiss Army knife saw, and I just saw in, being very careful to not go too deep. Again, if you go to the center of that, you're going to get that spindle uh, um, to kick out, and, it, and that's going to create an unstable bow drill. Um, use your saw, cut two cuts to where they just about touch, then use your knife blade and clean that up. In this case, I really took my time. I wanted to show you guys what I was doing, and I used my just my Bark River Aurora and just kind of sandwiched in from the left to the right, sandwiched in from the right to the left, and just slowly took out material, and then I really took my time cleaning this up. Here's a close-up of what that's going to look like. Um, you want to take your time. The, the, the smoother this area is as you clean it up, the, the better that flow of that coal will be, that dust will be, to generate and turn into a coal. Okay? Now, if this is not the case for this particular example, but if you start to see that this bowl here gets glazed looking, you don't want that. You want to take some sand or sandstone or something um, to clean that up and make that rough again. I do the same thing with my bow drill, sp my spindle. I rub that on some sandstone or something else, even um, the saw of my Swiss Army knife, to strike that a little bit and, and make that rough. You want to prepare the, 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 the hearth to look like this and not glazed. If you start getting squeaking when you're doing this process, by the way, you're getting glazing at the tip. It, the, the heat has generated, that's okay, but now you're not getting any friction. That glazing and squeaking is you're losing friction at the, at the, uh, at the, kind of the working end of this. A little pinch of sand, some people recommend, to make sure you've got that friction at the tip uh, and generating good heat and scraping off a good amount of material. Now, if you're doing this burning in process and you generate a bunch of dust, save that dust. There's no reason to make it twice. You can then set it in a little pile and then scoop that into the notch and get that dust there waiting for you, and that'll help you along. That will speed up uh, the actual fire making process. That's really all there is to making the hearth. Flatten both sides, burn in after making a dimple, and then cut the V out. However, I wanted to include in this video the making of the top bearing. It's a very similar process to this. Um, what you're going to need to do uh, to make this optimally is find a hard piece of wood. What, what I use here is oak. It's just an oak piece that feels kind of comfortable in my hand. Um, it's about an inch, inch and a half around. It feels pretty comfortable in my hand. I cut about a five inch section out of it. There's no rule for this. This is just what I do. It works for me. Uh, some people use a bigger piece. Some people don't even bother to cut it in half like I'm about to do. Um, this is what I like to do and what I'd like to teach you to, to kind of show you uh, a, a more proper way, I think, and what I see works better um, for making handholds. You take that and you baton it. This is a good picture of batoning. You just take your baton, whatever you're going to use, I see Bear Grylls on TV use a rock. This is because Bear Grylls is given a knife every time he goes out in the wilderness. That knife that I've got there is, is a $200 knife. I'm not going to hit it with a rock. And I also think that abusing your tools in the wilderness is a bad idea. There's branches everywhere. In fact, there's, a, there's an oak branch that I just cut a piece off of. Grab that. Whack your knife uh, 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 blade into the center of that. Split that right in the center. It's not going to be like the hearth. 
where you try to take a, you know, maybe an inch off of each side. You're going to want to tap that on there right down the center is what I do. Split it in half. And oak splits very nicely once you give it a couple of uh, uh, shots. It splits in half and looks just like this. I then take my knife and, and I clean up that flat portion, whatever side feels better to you. And then, as you can see here, I make another dimple. You've then prepared that piece that's going to go in your hand to uh, be used as a top bearing. All you're going to do is you're going to put the sharp end of the spindle into the dimple in the handhold, the dull end of the spindle into the dimple in the hearth, move that spindle back and forth until you create coal and then create fire. If you're going to practice with this a lot, I would highly advise using a more robust material. It will generate less friction at the point of the handhold and will work forever. One thing that I use is a, is a rock, a top rock. And I've simply used a half inch masonry bit I've got for $4 at Home Depot. And I kind of, you know, pecked away at the center until I was, I had a good handhold and then I used that masonry bit uh, to, to create a dimple in this rock. And it's, that doesn't need to be that deep of a dimple. You see here, I, I go in maybe an eighth of an inch, three sixteenths of an inch. That I've used that for hundreds of fires, hundreds of boulder fires. It absolutely does not wear away. It will work forever. Uh, steel works. A dimple in steel. Bone works. And, well, where are we going to get a bone? Um, you can go to uh, a pet store. Get a bone there. Start it with a little bit. It will stink when you make that first uh, drill with your masonry bit. But you've got that bone then forever, and we, we've seen evidence, um, uh, anthropological evidence, of people using bone for many, many things, and, and bow drill fire was certainly one of them. Again, steel, rock, bone, anything harder um, than wood, so that the wood wears away first, will work excellent as a handhold. So, so be creative. Um, some people use uh, a harder version of soapstone. The so softer soapstone will, will simply will get eroded really quickly. I made one out of aluminum once in the machine shop thinking I would make some that would look really twice. The problem with aluminum is that it transfers heat very well, so my hand got pretty hot pretty, pretty quick, but it, but it absolutely did work. Um, and once you've got that uh, handhold and you're ready to use, this is what the handhold looks like when you've used it once. Um, it uh, had burning in process done with it as well, but you, you see how, how much different it looks like the hearth. There should be less burning in at the handhold. And what you're going to also want to do when you, when you do this down the road is you're going to want to grease the tip, the spindle tip that goes into your handhold. Now, where are you going to find grease? Animal fat works very well. Um, the sides of your nose, which generates quite a bit of, of uh, oil when you have um, sweating and things like that during the day. Rub it on there. Your hair, if it's gotten greasy. Earwax, I've heard people using. Whatever works to grease that handhold or reduce that friction is what you're going to want to do. So definitely take a look at that. But that's what it looks like when you get done. It is really just that simple. We're slowly putting our pieces together through all, all these videos. And um, it, the one video you're going to want to see is the uh, bow drill overview and how to start this fire because we, we pretty much have all of our parts put together. Thanks for watching another video. This has been the Survival Garage.